Good evening and welcome to Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment in Canada, around the world. My name is Tahir Rai Qureshi. I'm a fellow of Los Institute of Canada, broker of record for City Pro Realty Inc. brokerage. I'm also principal broker of Canada Express Mortgage Inc. license 13241. Tonight, we have chosen a few topics, affordable housing, mortgage variable rates, and market update. We'll give you an update about market uh, 2022, uh, January. So let's talk about the affordability. As we have indicated before in our previous program, the affordability has really become a big issue because prices have skyrocketed. And we have given you reports about what happened in December uh, all year 2021. So the, especially it's affecting the, the, the first time home buyers and also low income Canadian, particularly Ontarians who are living here and they can afford it. Rental has gone up uh, significantly. So what's happening? This is, as you know, this 2022 is a year where municipal election and also Ontario government uh, election will be held. So everybody is looking at to see how we can improve the affordable housing. So affordable housing is, for example, in Ontario, we have a Peel region. Peel region have a Peel region uh, housing that they subsidize. They work with the private sector. They create social housing. And social housing is very on the rise and the agenda of the Ontario government because people are complaining they can't afford their house. And it's really affecting the low income uh, families across Ontario because we live and practice in Ontario. So we talk about Ontario. So what is really social housing? Social housing is a, a subsidized housing program that is uh, organized by the Ontario government. And they work with the various regions to implement that. And when there is a, a quality of uh, a subsidized home or affordable housing is created, it affects the neighborhood and market. And this is the one of the challenge that uh, the government will be facing because they are going to into election in June, hopefully. And they will say, how we create a quality affordable housing? The government has provided some funding to encourage uh, home builders and subdivisions to create more apartments and increase the inventory, uh, more, build more uh, uh, housing. But affordability is issue because at, at, the, at the moment, uh, even a town home is almost a million dollar, either 905 or 416 area. And then apartments are, depending on the size, average price is uh, over 760 in, in 416 and 720 in a 905 area. So that is the way the government is thinking where we can afford. Now, if the government cannot lend money to the private sector because the private entrepreneur, where builder and the developer has to invest their own money, but they control the market, they control the prices. They control how they release the new housing in the marketplace. We're hoping that the federal government, Italian government, and municipality come up with a, a digitized, a fully uh, integrated uh, approval system where their approval can be expedited, is based on certain standards, and is go through a very fast process instead of having these red tapes, which takes a... a months and years to, to get approval. As, as you all know that, even though new housing are being built, but you can predict that, I, I think I did a little post recently on social media, that it's gonna take 24 to 36 months, the day you get the approval when the construction starts and the time you get a house or condominium will be even higher because there's a lot of utilities and a lot of other works uh, happens. So there is a, at least 36 months. Biggest challenge we have is we have immigration. Over 100,000 immigrants are coming uh, in, in 2022. 
we already have a shortage of housing. And we have lots of Canadian that are city, uh, staying overseas non-residents because of pandemic, they are thinking to come back. And when they come back, they will be buying properties and they will have more buying power than the, the local uh, residents to buy a house uh, in Ontario. So therefore, it is creating a lot of pressure on Ontario government because we practice in Ontario. Therefore, we talk about Ontario. So what is Ontario social housing? What they are trying to do? So basically, they, 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 they were trying to create more affordable housing. They want to invest. They want to be in a goodwill of the people, the common people, people who can't afford. Their income is low. They do vote. They have the voting power. So this was a big issue in the election, federal election last year in September. We haven't seen any changes coming from the federal government in terms of how the real estate is governed, uh, where they have the jurisdiction. But most the mandate is in Ontario or the uh, municipality where they control certain approval process. So this is why they are what they're doing is they're trying to use for, uh, the buildings or land available to Ontario government to create affordable housing and move people to those locations if they can afford it. Again, it's election time, but the problem is when you are creating social housing, it creates a lot of a lot of impact on the property value. And common assumption is that uh, when there is a social development in the area, people don't object to it because they have to go through the approval process and they don't want to see low cost housing or social housing in their neighborhood because it's impact the, the value of the property. And this is the one of the big challenge that, that the government will be facing when they're going to say, I want to build a house near a, a area which is influenced by luxury homes or a good home. Now, when they, they determine the value of a property, they look at the location, location, location. We always talk about location. Obviously, location is connected with amenities, your school, the fireplace, the hospital, uh, you know, and, and other recreation facility, community center. Those are affected. So now what do you do about it? So social housing, which is part of what the Ontario government is planning to do to create more affordable housing, how they're going to choose the property? How are they going to use areas away from the city or they're going to have their lands and convert them into the, the housing or rebuild them? So this is where the issue is. Each, each province is facing different challenges because they are now have this mandate they have to do something about it so if federal government election has happened in september they couldn't do, do much about it mostly the province have uh, jurisdiction about affordability of housing the federal government will be providing funding they have multi multi years plans and they are trying to do uh, provide uh, support for structure and other support uh, supporting activities and some loans and some programs and not for profit acquisition. But at the end of the day, it's the province that has the power to create social housing or affordable housing, or they can work with the private sector to subsidize them. Again, it's going to be affecting the market if you are building a subsidized or, uh, or social housing in a, in a nice neighborhood. You're going to have objection. It's going to linger on. And then election promise that if there is a one, it will be not carried out. Because it affects the neighborhood, the property value. So when there is a, 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 a proposed um, a plan for social housing that is basically affordable housing, then they, they have to look at the what's going on in the marketplace. What is the value of the property in the area? And where can we put those those uh, affordable or social housing in the area. I am very keen and I'm always suggest that we have plenty of land in province of Ontario. Why don't we build more cities beside the 401 corridor or 403 going uh, toward Niagara or going toward London and have a, a 
a, a new uh, fast tra uh, train to stop and, and provide them a new development in the areas where accessibility should not be an option. I think there was a plan for mass transit uh, infrastructure investment, but I don't know what happens. We already got into fiscal challenges because federal government has borrowed so much money to help uh, citizens. We all uh, benefited a little bit uh, uh, when we were down, our income was down because of COVID. But the problem is that when we accumulate our debt, we will have less money for us to spend on the future program if we keep borrowing it and not to think physically responsibly to make sure we pay for it. So issue again is how to pay, pay for this program, social affordable housing, or government should enter into agreement with the builders who, or the developers who already have a land to tell them to build more housing and they will give them some incentive for increasing production, which probably will be more effective than uh, you spending your own bureaucratic uh, you know, mandate of a region to spend more money on administration because cost of administration is more significant even the program itself. So if you have a $10 million or $100 million project, uh, your administration cost is... Uh, almost 80, 90 million dollar, what's the purpose? It's not effective, it's not benefiting the masses. So therefore it's very, very important that they can work with the private sector to help them implement their agenda to create housing and then it make it more affordable. First of all, approval process has to be changed. Therefore, people can afford uh, because if they can expedite the approval process, it will uh, it, it will provide more inventory in the near future. This is very important. So I would say at least minimum, uh, Ontario government and the municipal uh, cities, they can agree to a, a, a speediest approval process for the builders, and they encourage the, the builders to bring more product in the marketplace. Obviously, pandemic has affected the cost of production, efficiency, the shortage of labor. Therefore, we already have a challenge where the cost of production or manufacturing has gone up. The still manufacturing of certain things are not up to the par or to the speed, steel, wood, all those steps because there is a shortage of labor. People have received government subsidies, subsidies and they don't like to get back to work. So there could be some changes that needs to be made to make sure that there is an attractive package coming from the builder uh, to hire more construction worker because there is a need for construction uh, workers in Ontario to, to work and build those projects. Now, this is very important because the value of the, uh, the property has gone up regardless of uh, location. And we need to talk with the consultant, uh, engineers, uh, professional uh, architects, planners, where can we build them? And I think we should have a, a conversation with also our real estate uh, trade organization, Ontario Real Estate, uh, Ontario real estate Association. Uh, Uriah can also help. We can provide you feedback uh, through our president of Uriah. Uh, Tom Hudak is uh, a brilliant uh, uh, personality. He's polit politically connected and also amazing person. He, he, he can be connected to get some feedback uh, on real estate point of view. So this is why it's very important. I think there was a, a committee that uh, uh, Tim Hudak was also presented and he's a part of the committee and we're very happy for that, that he's joining it because this is not a problem with just one of the three government. It's a problem for everyone, especially real estate professionals. Our livelihood depends with real estate. Right now, the, the way inventory is, we are 40% inventory and 60, more than 100% people are willing to buy the property. So our inventory is much, much less, and we need to help to increase that. And, and obviously, sellers is a market now because there is a shortage of housing. So this is why it's very, very important for 
for all the people who are involved in, in real estate industry, entire government. If you want to create social housing, you think about out of the box, should I work with the builders to give them incentive to increase inventory production and give them incentive? If you produce more housing, we give you bonuses or some incentive, tax break, input tax credit. That way it will encourage them to, to more uh, build more housing uh, cost efficiently. Also, the government and municipality agree to have a better digitized uh, uh, remote approval process where they can expedite approvals to get more inventory in the marketplace, put them in construction. Obviously, manufacturing has suffered because of pandemic. Production of the material has gone down, uh, and, and this is the, where the challenge is. So we have to kind of work. Ontario government has to work. Now, they are in election year. As you know, Ontario election is in this June and also municipal election. So this is a, a, a lifetime opportunity for you to talk to your candidates who are seeking your help and vote. What are you going to solve our affordable housing problem? How? And what incentive you're giving? Get that feedback from them and tell them to hold on to it. Ask every candidate on the provincial government who is seeking your support, tell me what are you doing with affordable housing? So every citizen who is suffering, can afford low income, can have a house, a shelter, and have a dignity and respect for his family without affecting the market condition. It's always supply and demand. If you have more supplies and less demand, you can see the buyer market. When you have a shortage of supply and more demand, it is a buy, uh, buy, uh, seller's market. So right now we have a seller's market. So we expect that even our councilor, they will be seeking election. And we will be talking to our mayor as well. What are you planning to do to work with, with the provincial government to get this approval process? What steps the, the our city or Peel region, city of Mississauga, Vaughan or Brampton, what step they have taken to make sure they make life easy for the builders to get their approval and they're building the permits so they can start construction. I'm sure they are doing it, but the only thing they need to share with us so we know they are doing it. Obviously, government of Ontario wants to increase social housing, which is going to impact the, uh, the value of the property, depend is existing building, they want to expand it, or they're going to rebuild something, they have a land, depending on location. But let's get going to make sure we have housing for every, every Ontario who can afford it, who has done safe, safe who has saved uh, uh, money to put down. And there's, there are special programs with the CMAC. You can go and visit cmac.com or .ca and, and find out because there are incentives for buying input tax credit. There's a property tax uh, rebate about 4,000. There is a federal government incentive for about 5,000 input tax credit. And there are other benefits, uh, especially when you're buying a new home and you certify this is the first time you are buying it. And the government will give you a, a, a rebate, which builder will claim. And if you are buying as a principal residence, but if you buy as a commercial, as an investor, it is a different story. And then you end up pay, paying the HST and then obviously you can reclaim once you rent the property and you take position and you rent it and you can claim by input tax credit from uh, CRA. So this is very important to talk about affordable housing. This is the best time for you to start talking to your uh, representative. And anytime if you have any question, uh, please give me a call. My direct number is 416-451-3489. I'd be more than happy to, to connect with you. Also, you can provide feedback, call for uh, 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 Awaz Entertainment, 416-786-9809. Not only that you can get a special advertising rate uh, because you're watching or subscriber or reading Avitar, but you can also provide feedback about our program live on Facebook. You can subscribe to Awaz Entertainment um, and... Um, uh, also, YouTube, you also have a Instagram, LinkedIn, 
everywhere you can see that our program is broadcast and it's broadcast at 7 p.m. on Thursday every night. Now, the other topic that we want to talk about it. So I am hoping that you will be talking to your candidates and you can call me 416-451-3489 and give me the feedback so then we can air them and we can invite them and we talk with them about what the government is doing. Are they going to go towards social housing or are they going to provide more creatively solution to give incentive to the builders because they have the land, they have the, the permit, they're ready to build instead of doing a, con a condominium uh, for rent, uh, uh, they can do rental or they can create a, a condominium for working with the Ontario uh, government to have a more uh, socialized economic housing which does not impact the market. Now, the other important thing is called uh, mortgage rates. Most of the cases, preferably Ontario likes to have variable rates. Variable rates right now uh, are significantly low as compared to the fixed rate. But, but it used to be open variable and it is no longer open variable, it's always open variable uh, fixed, depending on the terms, the two years, three years, or five years, or 10 years. Advantage of that is that we, you are paying very low interest rate, so you're paying and you, you can afford the flexibility of price hike because it may be a less than 1% to up to 2.31%. Uh, Variable to fixed rate, depends on it. The all bank advertise certain rates, but they negotiate privately and give you a better deal. So those, when you have a fixed rate and you take the risk, only thing you will take, when you have a fixed income and you know that your income is limited, it's not going to jump so high so quickly, or you run the risk of losing a job, if you have variable rates, you're okay. But what will happen if Bank of Canada raise the interest rate? Normally, emotionally, human, humanly, we get panic. Oh my God, interest rates are going up. But look at this. Let's assume you have been paying 1% variable for two years, three years, okay? Now you have two more years term left and they just increase quarter point or maybe twice, half a point altogether. But fixed rate, the day you got it could be 2%, almost double. So you still have saved the money unless it go very rapidly, which I don't think will happen because of the economic condition right now we have. But what will happen is the people get panicky when they see, oh, Bank of Canada is increasing the rates. But you look at the calculation. If you've been paying 1% for a period of time, and if the rate quarter inch, we're still way lower than the, the fixed rate you have. Let's say 2.312, maybe 2.45. You're still lower. But the only thing is that it's very fragile because it can jump. Nobody controls the rates. Federal government doesn't control the rates. The bank decides based on their own decision, their own analytical approach they use. So the risk is can you afford the fluctuation of payment on a monthly basis? That is the reason. You have to think about it. If it has a significant increase because of fluctuation of rate and your affordability is up, you may not be able to afford your mortgage. And not necessarily you have just the mortgage. You may have a line of credit like anybody else. You have a student loans. You have a car payments. You have all utility, mortgage payment, everything else adds up. Some special needs in the family for the child. So this all adds up. So why you take the risk? So you need to calculate that. This is the, what you got to talk to your mortgage broker. I'm a principal broker with Canada Express Mortgaging License Number 13241. I can provide you guidance. You can go to um, mortgage-express.ca 
express mortgage express dash mortgage dot ca and you can see lots of things that i have shared on the website to educate you about this so you can learn that or you can call me directly 416-451-3489 i can help you so mortgage rate has only impact based on the risk that you carry can you afford this fluctuation on payment if you can do that then it's all right the variable mortgage rate will not exceed the the, the uh, fixed rate at the time of the increase because unless the mortgage fixed rates are increased variable will go up fixed rate will stay let's assume you must have a right in the mortgage that you can lock into a fixed rate so you think about that also that you negotiate with the lender to make sure that uh, you have that provision in your agreement to make sure you are able to to uh, to to get that adjusted rate just to avoid the risk so there are lots of uh, uh, write up about fixed rate versus uh, mortgage rate uh, versus variable it can be low and i think it's a good way of thinking about it but as long as you can plan it so if you are using a variable rate your mortgage will be very cheap because you can afford it and you can pay it this is why it's very important to make sure that uh, you can calculate your total asset when you talk about affordability you look at the total management of your portfolio how much asset you have how much uh, liabilities you have what is your income is what are your expenses are and what is the risk factor that's why you have ofsi rule stress test they built in two percent for very uh, variation as a stress test that means if if rate goes up to two percent higher than what you negotiated you still can handle it that's why how they qualify you so therefore i do not expect a tremendous increase in 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 in, um, in uh, bank of canada rates but you can predict that there is a definitely two or three small increases coming uh, soon uh, in march maybe some maybe in june or july you're going to have that they're going to be a change in in uh, possibly in our uh, rate but if you are using a variable mortgage you shouldn't be worried too much because you still have that that cushion because if instead of going to a 1.3, a 2.31, a five-year fix, and you take five-year variable, let's say 1%, 1.25% or whatever, you are in a better position. And they will never shock the market to increase the interest rate very significantly. They're going to gradually improve that. So you will give... Uh, so you think about that depending on who you're dealing with rate varies is very important to talk to mortgage broker or consultant or call me 416-451-3489 and i can give you some suggestion on that you are watching realty coffee talk on awaz entertainment in canada around the world if you are a builder developer lawyer and mortgage broker agent or real estate broker or broker brokerage a plumber, electrician, uh, all type of people who are involved with the construction. You should advertise in awards entertainment. They have uh, millions of dollars of uh, uh, viewers across, uh, uh, across the globe. And monthly reading is almost close to 9 million and up. And you can watch, you can get a very special discount by calling 416-786 9809 this is very or you can write info at awazent.com and get a special rate ask miss jabeen to give you a special rate we're going to take a short break and then we'll come back and continue we'll talk about market update good evening and welcome to realty coffee talk on awards entertainment my name is tahir Kreshi. i'm your host we're going to talk about now 
2020 January, uh, 2022 January report. It's a market watch report from Toronto Regional Real Estate Board that I share the data. There are two very big, uh, significant MLS system, which is a TRAB and also ITSO. They do not share their data, so accuracy of information is as provided as I collect uh, from, uh, from TRAB. So let's talk about the property. So in uh, when we closed 2021, in TRAB data, there was 100, and 21,693 transaction. This is the highest record of transaction ever reported in the over 100 years of history of Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. Our average price, including everything, was 1,095,419. This is a general applied based on the total volume, based on the total cell data that we have. And this is the information. In December, our average price of 2021 was 1,157,812 in 416 and 419 area. Reason I'm going to, uh, to, uh, to sh share this information to you is because when we talk about uh, a January to January, we are talking about January 21 to January 2022. But actually in December, there was very significant average price increase. Therefore, I want to share that information with you. So in December, the average price was 1,157,812. In, in the entire trap, uh, Toronto Regional Real Estate Board uh, MLS system. An average price was uh, 1,095,419 for uh, 2021. Now, let's look at the data now. In sale to, in January, compared to January, remember the January was low. So January 2021, we have a 6,888 transaction. In 22, we have 5,636. So it's minus 18.2 because they're comparing to January 2021 to 2022. Now, new listing, we had 9,438 in uh, 2021, and we have 7,979 in January 22, 22 as minus 15.5. So they're comparing January to January now. So now active listing, we are minus 44% as compared to what was in January uh, 2021 to 2022, 7,396 compared to 4,140. 44% less available as compared to January last year. Average price, now remember I mentioned to you, the average price in January of 2021 was 966,068 dollars, and in 2022 it is 1,242,793, 28 28.6% increase average in housing from last January to this January. So imagine that that is why the your Price is going up because look, affordability is the issue. That is what the price is. Now I, I look at the calculation between December and uh, uh, December 2021 to January is about eight percent increase from January to uh, December to January. The the listing day on the market used to be 24 days in 21, and now it's only 13 days, 44.4 percent. And property day on market, 33 days. Now is only 18 days, minus 45.5%. Now let's go to the prices. So we'll talk about the detached home in 416 is regardless of the size, is 1,886,413 in 416, 
and 905 is 1,702,143. That's a detached home. You have to talk to your realtor to make sure that you are dealing with a realtor who can determine the value of property or a specific property location, geographic location, and where property is on the which street, because these are general information. Now, semi-detached home in 416, 1,471,535. These are all Canadian dollars. In 905, SAMI is $1,236,081. In townhome, 1,080,000, in 416, and 1,000,000. 83,801. It doesn't talk about condo townhome. It doesn't talk about townhome freehold. It doesn't talk about townhome freehold with parcel of tide land, POTF. It just talk about townhouse. Condo apartment in January 2022, 760,643 in 416 and average price. 720, 720,532 in 905. Let's look at the year-over-year -year percentage. So I'm not going to talk about sale. We already talked about the sale year we ch change of price, average price. So detached home, 19.2% price change from January 2021 to, to January 22. And 905. So, uh, uh, sorry, 19.2 percent in uh, 416 and 30.4 percent in 905 area. Semi-detached, 22.1 percent change, percentage change, and 37.3 percent. So semi semi has sold more than a detached home in January uh, 22. A town home. 32.6% in 416 and 35.5% in 905 area. And condo, 21.7%, whereas in 905 was 31.6%. So you see, viewers, the affordability is a big issue, but look at the jump in prices. This is why the our entire government has to work with the municipalities to expedite the approval process, offer some incentive to the builder, instead of creating a more red tape and bureaucratic process, hiring more employees, then putting the money in the program. If they work with the builders who already own the land, they already have the building in construction, work with them to create more rental properties or create a program where People can buy it, they subsidize it, and they can buy it and pay back. Some countries may have some programs where the government will subsidize them and they collect the money. CMAC has a program is called property sharing, where a buyer can borrow up to five to ten percent, and they will they will become an equity partner with you. They will not claim any interest if you live through the mortgage process. But if you cash the property ahead of time, then they want their money back. And, and you have to give the percentage of the profit that you have obtained and that to, to calculate the value of their contribution. So look at the CMAC side, look at the program they have, and try to talk to a very educated, very competent professional who can guide you. So, I want you to think about this. When you are buying a property, you are a first-time buyer or you are a, a buyer that has the equity, please form the team. Get your real estate professional, your lawyer, your home inspector, your appraisal guy, your uh, technicians or uh, renovators, if there is an improvement need. Get everybody together, form a team to make sure that you process, you work as a team, get advice. You pay the lawyer for closing costs. Why don't you talk with them and discuss your terms and conditions, the offer that you put in, 
to make sure your language is correct. Sometimes you need the option to assign the, the property to someone because you can't afford the mortgage. Your mortgage has uh, been de declined or you, you, you think that you may not get it. So make sure that you have the clauses to protect yourself, have the ability to assign someone else instead of defaulting on the agreement of purchase sale because it will have a consequences. We're going to talk about that subject in the next episode. So you are watching Realty Coffee Talk on Awards Entertainment. So we talk about affordable housing. We talk about mortgage variable rates and market condition. If you have any questions about real estate, I am a fellow of Real Estate Europe Canada, broker of record for City Pro Realty Inc. Brokerage. Our office number is 905-785-9923 or my direct number is 416-451-3489. Please feel free to give me a call. We're looking forward for the, uh, for the opportunity to serve you. If you want to advertise on Awards Entertainment, so you're, you reach out to your potential clients around the world. I want you to subscribe Awards Entertainment on Facebook, on social media, you, you, YouTube, and Instagram, and, uh, and Twitter. And you can watch our Realty Coffee Talk episode on realtycoffeetalk.com and subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment. My name is Tahir Aikrashi. I look forward to see your next episode of Realty Coffee Talk on Thursday, next Thursday at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. May God bless you all. May God bless Canada.